Well, the other day I was out doing some brush hogging and I stopped the machine so that I could clean out the screen in front of the radiator because the engine temp was starting to creep up a little bit. So I knew that that screen was getting obstructed with some of the seeds, chaff, leaves, and other debris that flies up when you're doing brush hogging and it's dry. So I cleaned the radiator and then I hopped back on to start the engine back up and nothing. Nothing at all. There was power to the electrical system. You could turn the key on, I could run the lights, do all of that, but no crank to start it up. Now, if this were a newer machine, I might have been completely dead in the water. But because this is an older machine, and I did some digging around the internet, I figured out how to start it without the dash controls or the ignition switch at all. Now, I'll show you how that works with this machine and then we'll get into actually trying to get to that ignition switch so we can test it and see if that is indeed the problem. This Ford 1700 tractor has a very simple electrical system in terms of starting this engine. This particular machine was equipped with a neutral start safety switch. However, that switch failed many years ago. So this machine has been wired to start without it. In other words, the circuit just goes straight from the ignition switch down to the starter, which is on this side of the engine down in there. We'll jump down there in a second. So all this ignition switch is doing is basically creating a contact to take the hot feed from the battery and then send it down to the solenoid. There's nothing else in between impeding this starting. As long as the key is on, you can turn on your lights and everything else, but this is a mechanically fuel injected engine. So the only way to shut it down is to shut off the fuel by dropping the throttle all the way. There's nothing electrical as any part of that. You can turn the key off with the engine running. All that does is turn off your gauges and all of that, but the engine will keep right on going. So here's our starter motor right on top. This is the solenoid body here. And so what happens is when you turn on the key, that white wire that comes in on top there is completing the circuit. Essentially, when you turn the key on, you're sending current through that wire, which then activates this solenoid. Now, when you start this and this solenoid activates, it takes power from the big positive cable there from the battery and then connects it over to the starter motor. In addition to that, it causes the gear to engage the flywheel. So you have to energize the solenoid in order to start the engine. If you just jumped it across the starter motor there, you'd crank the starter motor, but you wouldn't actually engage the flywheel. So I figured all that out from the service manual. And because that white wire is coming from the key switch, essentially, if you can put power there, you will activate the solenoids. So what I did to start this was take a jumper cable from the positive terminal on the battery there, and then run it down to that terminal there on the solenoid where that white wire is coming in. And doing that causes the starter to engage and crank the engine over. And as long as you've got the throttle set up, this engine will start. Now I suspect that this ignition switch here is the issue. I recently made a video where I replaced the glow plug indicator because the old one burned out. I've since had interesting symptoms where intermittently the glow plug indicator glows red hot almost instantaneously when activating the plugs. And I thought, well, maybe a glow plug's going bad or something's going on to cause the resistance in that circuit to go way up. But now I'm suspecting it, it might actually just be the ignition switch because when I measured resistance across glow plugs, I wasn't seeing like there was any excessive resistance there and they had been working perfectly fine. So the way this switch works is you turn back, the battery's already disconnected, that would activate the glow plugs. And then that position is the run position or the on position for the electrical system. And then you turn it one more click to start and to me, it feels like some of the travel is not there. That doesn't seem like it's moving the way that it used to or as much as it used to. Now, maybe it is, but I'm suspect that there's something going on there with this switch. Now, getting to this is a little bit fun or at least interesting. So you can see up top here, that's the glow plug indicator. 
This is the flasher. I actually put that in. That's a invention of mine with a Napa flasher. The ignition switch itself is back in there. This is the voltage regulator. The fuel tank is right here. And you can see the kind of space based on my hand that exists there. So really what I need to do is move the fuel tank. Now this fuel tank, you got a fuel shut off down here. So we can just turn the fuel off. And there's the fuel line coming out. So I'm going to unbolt the bracket here. So there's basically a bolt on the bottom here and same on the other side. But this is a 13 millimeter nut. There's a lock washer too, so you don't want to lose that. I'm going to get these fuel lines off, hop this out of here. Next, there's just two screws on the outside, either end of that crossbar. We'll undo those, we'll lower that out of the way, and that will give direct access behind to where that ignition switch is. Here's a quick look at the wiring diagram for the 1700. If you have the service manual, this is actually misprinted and labeled as the diagram for the 1900. And the one that's labeled for the 1700 is actually uh, the diagram for the 1900. The way you know that is based on the number of glow plugs here. The 1900 has a three cylinder engine. The 1700 just has a two cylinder engine. And then the fuses are also a little bit different. What we see here is the ignition switch. So we've got the AC, that's a red line that comes from the fuse box, which is out of the frame here. Then you'll notice out of 17, we got a wire going to the glow indicator, and then we have one coming from a 19 post as well. The 30 post in the middle has a wire that goes over to the solenoid and the, the starter itself. And then the last thing that's here is out of that 50 post, there's a white wire. You'll notice there's a safety starter switch. That's no longer there on this machine and it goes right over to the starter solenoid. Now, here's how the switch actually looks on the tractor. This is the red line coming from the fuse box itself. As we come over here, this is the 19 post that goes to the glow indicator. This post here, that has three wires coming out. This is the 17 post. Basically, this is going to the glow indicator, but then ultimately also feeding to the glow plugs. This post up here is the white wire. That is the 50 post that's going to the starter solenoid. And this here is your 30 post, which has the, the power kind of coming in. Down here at the solenoid, you see the yellow wire here. So that's going up to that 30 post. And here is the white wire, which is coming from that 50 post. So essentially what we want is we want continuity from here to here. Key off. There's no continuity there. We're not measuring anything. Key on, key start, nothing. So it appears we're not working from the switch. When we go to the glow plug circuit, so let me switch my leads. All right, there's key off. So we don't have anything going through there. Glow plug activate. And now we're reading some resistance because of course now we're connecting through the wiring. Given it looks like that it's a bad ignition switch, we're done for the day. I'm gonna go and order one. And when it comes in, I'll get it installed and we'll test things out. So I'm gonna leave this sitting until the new switch 
arrives. It's now four days later. The new ignition switch has arrived. I ordered this from Steiner Tractor. I looked at the OEM switch from Messix. It was $147, whereas this was $49.99 plus shipping, which would have been about the same in either case. So I went with the $49.99 option. So this comes with everything, the keys. It comes with this rubber cover, which was long gone for the old one that goes over that when you pull the key out. And of course it's the five post switch. And if we look at the back, you can see the numbers on there, which otherwise match the wiring diagram that you see right below. Since I wasn't getting any continuity on the old switch, I figure I'll try it with this one. We need to go from the 30 post down here, which is the battery terminal. And then the 50 post up here, which is the terminal that goes to the starter solenoid. So if I can get both of those on there and turn the key, there's on and start. And notice now we actually get a reading and there's no resistance through there because we have good contact. So this switch is good. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the tractor. I'll switch the wires over one at a time, just so that I don't mix anything up. Once I get the switch in, we'll give it a little test, and then I'll reinstall the fuel tank. All right, so let's test things out. We're fully in neutral, throttles off, no fuel tank in here. Turn the key on and still nothing. That battery might be dead. So the battery is indeed dead. I don't know how that happened from a week of sitting here disconnected. I ultimately figured it out with testing with the multimeter, but then I hooked the lawnmower up to the tractor so that I could put enough power into the tractor to just test the ignition switch. And indeed, when it was hooked up to the lawnmower with the lawnmower engine running, I had enough power to just kind of click the starter with a partial crank over. So what I'm gonna try and do now is hook up the battery charger jumper on it to see if I can just get it to start normally and get running. Fuel tank and everything's back in. I reassembled all that in the interim when I was fiddling around. So we're ready to just test fire and see if we can go. I bled the fuel system without cranking, so it may not stay running, at least on the first go. All right, we'll give it some throttle. We'll see what we can do. Oh. <sighs> Even with that, it's not enough. I'll have to use the truck. Okay, we're hooked up to the truck now. Throttle's up. We're all in neutral. Needless to say, I'll be letting this run for a little while. If it doesn't seem to hold a charge from that, I will be going to get a new battery tomorrow morning. At least we're back up and running. Seems like the electrical system is all good as long as we got a battery to power it.